How's it going, Teal Boys? It is the semifinals of the college football playoff. Uh, we get a face-off against Penn State, and on the other side of the bracket, Oklahoma and Texas will face off. A rivalry game in the semifinals is absolutely absurd for us. It's a rematch against the only team to have beaten us so far. The Nittany Lions were able to win it in overtime against us. Pretty disappointing loss, I would say, for us. Uh, winning, kind of expecting to win. Penn State is a 99 overall team, but we absolutely expected to win that game. We had every opportunity, but a couple of uh, issues late in the game. We threw a pick six uh, where we had two guys completely wide open running downfield. So that was like a 14 point swing. Definitely changed things. And then we got into overtime miraculously and just couldn't finish the job. Again, 99s across the board for the Nittany Lions. We're going to, well, I think we'll just have them in their away jerseys. It's Penn State after all. Um, and we are the one seed. They are the five seed. For our uniforms in this playoff, we're kind of going and customizing them. We started out with the black jersey and the teal pants for the quarterfinal round. For the semifinals, I think we're going to do the opposite. Teal jersey, black pants, and then hopefully for the uh the college football national championship game we can wear just the standard homes and put the teal pants on but for now that's what it's gonna be let's waste no more time and get right into this game looking at the numbers we've seen this matchup again once before 11 and 2 for penn state both of their losses coming in conference uh, they put up a decent amount of uh, yards and points on offense. They slowed people down enough on defense. Um, just kind of middle of the road there, but it was enough to get them into this playoffs. Offensively, we've been pretty all over the place. Some games we dominate, other games it's completely a struggle, including our first round of the playoffs where we barely scored a touchdown and it was just a defensive slugfest. Uh, defensively, though, of course, one of the best in the country's top players for us next year we already know gonna be great but the top players for penn state next year look even better a uh, lot of linemen there and how about this three injured players for the nitty lions in this game a right end a defensive tackle and an outside linebacker they certainly will miss those guys that can make it a little bit easier on our offense and it will be a nice sunny uh probably January day here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena hoping to get this one just easily out of the way I don't want to struggle at all this game we do lose the toss so oh Penn State's going to elect to receive the ball well we'll get the ball to start the third quarter a little bit windy here today and Frederick can just get us underway oh I'm a little bit nervous here I think we should be able to get the win but uh, it's going to take a pretty good game. We got to execute well all game long. As we come into this first play from scrimmage from Penn State, I'm going to throw out uh, our little wager that we've done in the past. If this video gets somewhere around 100 likes in the first 24 hours of being uploaded, we'll go back to back on the uploads. And assuming we win this, uh, we'll play the national championship tomorrow. Two runs in a row for Penn State. Looked like the exact same play. Uh, and it's working all too well. 19 yards there at that time for Kayvon Lee. Coming off of a game in which we held Auburn spectacularly on the ground. Uh, and they passed the ball all over us. I'm kind of expecting the passes, but it's a new team. Penn State running the ball well to start this one, but we finally get the tackle on the option. We'll expect the blitz to be enough to force them now to drop back and throw their first pass of the game. And it looks to be that way. And couple of guys open all over the place. We don't give up the first down, but we almost did. Third and one now for Penn State. And I think we're going to sell out to stop the run here. Hoping for the best. Trying to bring the pressure. Kale Mackey and a couple of other defenders get into the backfield. And we force the fourth down here at about midfield. So it's going to have to be the punt team coming out for Penn State. Kicking it to the most dangerous man in the country as this is not going to be fielded almost a beautiful coffin corner unfortunately for penn state it does land in the end zone for a touchback the other big cats that we faced in the auburn tigers last week 
Did a great job of stopping the running game. We're going to hope that it can be really successful today as we take off down the field. And Radon Randell off to the races on the first play from scrimmage for the offense. And he's going to be inside the red zone, 62 yards downfield before finally being caught from behind. And now we'll look to the air on this second down. They are going to leave. Oh, no, that's going to be an interception. I don't know why I threw the ball. I guess I thought Marquise was doing something different, but there's a fumble, and we're going to recover the turnover. So really just a loss of maybe a couple of yards. I really hope that this is actually a fumble. It looked clean to me. What a break for the offense. Radon Randell breathing a sigh of relief after that one as he got bailed out. The big hit from his offense gives him the ball back and a good run up the middle for CJ Beasley gives us a second and six. Uh, we're going to just keep running the ball, I think. On this second down, decent blocking. Braden Bennett comes in. He breaks a couple of tackles and he's got that first and goal down to the two or the three yard line. Running game working spectacularly is this Penn State team missing a couple of defensive linemen. We're going to go fullback dive to JJ Barr up the middle and... Well, JJ supposedly got a yard, maybe a couple of inches, but he gets crushed at the line there. And I'm sure that Penn State's aware of this because we have faced each other this season, but we are incredibly stubborn when we're near the goal line. It's going to be another fullback dive, and this time JJ Barr finds Pater, gets into the end zone, and the Teal Boys are going to be first to strike in this game. So it's now 7 to nothing. And the defense gives us a chance here. If they can get a stop to just blow this one wide open. Charles Hart gunning down the field and keeping these guys inside the 20. Uh, they'll regret returning that kick. And I think that we're going to bring a little bit of pressure on this first down. Expecting the run. It's going to be an option out towards the edge. Sidney McRae covers off the quarterback. Will Phillips and Aaron Jenkins both have their tackles broken. There's a stiff arm cheese and another tackle broken. Then Jenkins is going to have to come back for his second attempt to get the tackle as Lee goes 37 yards himself. That man just went beast mode on us as they're going to step back to pass. And the quarterback finally throws it away. Pressure was getting there pretty quick. We did bring a little blitz. But my goodness, the running game for Penn State really strong. Going to force me to bring pressure. I think most of this game looks like another handoff as we try to bring pressure in. We do get there, but we give up four yards. Thankfully, it gives us a third down to work with. So we will still bring a blitz. Five-man rush on this third down, trying to jump the snap properly. Not the best. It's going to be a slip screen. We're there, and it's oh, a pass just luckily incomplete for Brandon Lewis. The refs gave him the benefit of the doubt, saying that he got that arm moving forward, so just incomplete, but it brings up another fourth down where they're going to have to punt the ball away inside their own territory, inside our territory, but that was an absolute dime of a kick. Uh, that puts us inside the five. I'm not so sure about the rest of the Penn State team, but their punter has certainly showed up to play today as we'll run CJ Beasley up the middle on first down, trying to get us away from the danger of you know, getting dropped for a safety. Until they force us to pass the ball, I'm going to avoid it like the plague right now. Don't want to throw another pick, but I do want another good read option. Right on Randell, cutting it upfield. Oh, so close to maybe finding a gap, but you know, instead it's a third and one. We're going to hand this ball off. A little counter to Braden Bennett on third down. I don't want to punt the ball away. The blocking held up enough. Braden, power running from the speed back, gets forward for four. That moves the chains for us. And now we can just, well, continue to run. No reason not to if it's working as well as it has been so far. Uh, you know, we're really sucking these guys in, trying to look for a chance maybe to open up a deep bomb. And this could be incredibly dangerous, but now we're going to go for it. Play action. Pressure is coming. Man's open deep. Marquise Jackson catches it almost in stride. Somehow gets caught up too, but... Another big play for the offense, and Radon completes his second pass after the first being an interception. That one's 58 yards downfield. Almost enough to get us back inside the red zone. It'll be first down, and they want to bring a little safety blitz. So I'm going to send DJ Johnson deep, see if we can get him into the end zone. He was open. I'm going to scramble with it, though. Radon can't make a man miss. There's a flag down. We're going to assume this is a holding or a clipping. And Yep, that'll bring us back. 
Replay first down here, I guess. Willie Moyes, the right guard, has gotten called for that one. A bit of a shame as we'll probably make this the final play of the first quarter. Stepping back to pass on this first down. The blitz is coming heavily. We're going to just take off once again and right on. Just going to use his legs all day long. There's another 14 yards on the ground for him. Three carries for 80 yards for the quarterback as we end this first quarter. Up 7 nothing inside the red zone, looking to make it 14 nothing. Uh, and again, we get the ball to start the third quarter. This one could get ugly really, really quick for Penn State. We will start the second quarter from the 20-yard line. This, again, we're just going to hand the ball off. And on second and six, C.J. Beasley just weaving his way around inside there. Got nine yards and a first down. It's almost funny to me how much better we are running the football this game compared to last. Uh, that wasn't quite good, though. The counter gets met in the backfield for a loss of a yard. Maybe taking a chance on this one. Maybe we find Chad Bradshaw early. Otherwise, we're looking at a curl, and we're going to go for it. Marquise Jackson, wide open. Beautifully timed route and ball. And there's Radon making up for the interception. Gets himself a passing touchdown. As we go up 14-0 in this Rose Bowl game. Penn State has got to be pretty worried at this point. Uh, you know, down two scores. Your offense really hasn't done much outside of a play or two. Where's it going to come from? Curious to see what adjustments they do decide to make. We'll be expecting the pass on this first down. It will be a screen, and Durham Finch actually is the one to chase down Parker Washington, only allowing three yards on the play. I think with this second and seven, it's time to bring the blitz. Expecting the run on this down, and it's going to be a counter, and Jenkins gets there, and... So does Kale Mackey to just finish that one for a loss of a yard. We can expect the pass on this third down. The question is, can we actually stop it? As, okay, they motion the tight end out and then back in. And over the middle, they go to that tight end, but he's short of the line to gain. It's fourth and one. So the punter will be called back out one more time. Uh, third time, actually, for this game. And this time, he's going to have to kick it where it'll be returnable for Marquise. Returner of the year, getting his hands on it. And that was just bad user from me. Only getting five yards there on the return. Should have been a whole lot more. Well, let's keep using this read option. It's working tremendously. No reason to go away from it yet. Right on. Okay, he's taking a couple of hits. Uh, maybe I should be sliding down on a few of these. 13 runs to three passes is our play calling so far in this game. No deep safety. Uh, we're sending guys deep here for sure. Look at this. Somebody's got to be wide open on the play action. B is there, and I almost threw a pick. It just wasn't set. Marquise was gone. Absolutely gone. I got a little bit worried with how long the play action was taken, so went away from it. Probably paid the price. CJ Beasley getting the stiff form. Cheese on the third down counter is enough to move the chains for us and keep this drive alive. And I think it's time for another Marquise Jackson long bomb here. I don't see how he's going to be kept up with. Oh, my goodness. Great defense from number 39 there to stake with it. Maybe if I waited another second, Marquise would have had the separation. But J.J. Henry did a great job on that one of breaking the pass up over the middle. We should have a man wide open. Braden Bennett has been known to drop wide open passes before. But hauls that one in and, again, gets us another first down. Really uh, feeling pretty efficient on offense so far. This one to run up the middle to Braden, and that's going to work for six more yards. At this point, two minutes and 40 seconds left in the half. I think I want this to be the final drive of the half. We get the ball to start the third quarter. If we can score anything on this one, as I'm just going to throw it away. Whew. If we can score anything and then get the ball to start the next half, we would be dominating <laughs> Of course, we have to convert the third down. Maybe not the best play for it, because I'm going with the four verts. We'll see how it works outside the pocket. Plenty of space to scramble, and yeah, we'll take it. We'll go on the run and let Radon just step out of bounds at the 20-yard line or so. I see no reason to throw up a potential interception when we've been able to scramble so easily, and now... Uh, almost inside the red zone again. We can hand it off. Beasley, a little juke, but... Man, he burned the safety, got hit by the lineman and knocked down. That play gets cut short at only seven yards. Could have been a touchdown otherwise. 
Uh, and we're going to reward him with another handoff here. Up the middle to CJ Beasley. Trying to follow the blockers. And it's going to work out for the first and goal. Now inside two minutes. All of a sudden, we've turned into like a power running team as we're going to go with it again. And the blocking is beautiful. Braden Bennett gets hit at the end zone, but finds his way in. Crosses the goal line. And we're up three touchdowns in the Rose Bowl. First half going so well for us. Oh, we have all our timeouts. So does Penn State. There's a chance we could get the ball back and score again. I really want a lot of revenge here. That's a pretty good return they just got there. But considering this is the only team that we lost to uh, in the regular season, I just want to beat them down. I would love, love, love a shutout. Although this slip screen working tremendously. Will Phillips has to get there and knock Lee out of bounds. I'm going to go ahead and say that one's on me for just not paying enough attention as they will step back to throw again and over the middle. Uh, threw that into just kind of a blob of teal jerseys. He's lucky that we don't have the ball. That will stop the clock with a minute and 25. It also brings up a second down. Expecting these guys to continue to pass. If they run, we'll expect a timeout pretty much right after and they go right over the middle. This running back is uh, doing everything he can to get this offense to move. See if we can bring a little bit of a blitz on this down. And we do get to the quarterback. He throws it out early, though, and finds Dotton for four. That was the perfect time to dial up the pressure. We were just a second too late to get there. So they'll step back to throw once again. And only rushing three. Sandcastle drops the interception. Oh, that hurts. A fantastic opportunity for us to get the defense off the field. And instead, it hurts quite a bit. And there's our missed opportunity to force the fourth down. Oh, just couldn't get the tackle on the tight end. This is pretty brutal. Oh, my gosh. The, the three-man rush just not getting the pressure there quite soon enough. This one's going to be completed as well as... Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to keep Penn State off the board on this drive. I think a lot of it is they're just getting a little bit lucky with their execution is now they decide to run the ball and they're going to be forced to take their first time out. But even that one worked pretty well. We will bring Riley this time on the blitz as it's going to be another handoff and it'll be a first and goal. Second timeout taken for Penn State. At this point, short of a turnover, I expect these guys to score. So we're going to be taking our timeouts to try and maximize the amount of time left for us. But we don't need to take our timeouts because Penn State's into the end zone. No shutout for us today. Uh, they find the man in the back of the end zone. A bit of a pick play ran there. Uh, kind of a shame. 21-7. Well, Marquise gets his first opportunity to return a kick in this game. Relatively deep into the end zone. But, you know, that's not going to stop us. The blocking is not great but Marquise does a decent job to get out to the 25. Now with only 43 seconds we are going to be passing the ball but we have all of our timeouts so I might be scrambling a little bit as well. We don't necessarily need to get it all although Marquise Jackson across midfield gets 28 yards just like that. I think sometimes they expect him just to be running straight down the field that when he makes any sort of cut in his route they don't expect it this time radon just gonna scramble so that we can get out of bounds and stop the clock save our timeouts as much as we can the wind will be coming at us at about six miles an hour so uh we're not necessarily in a spot where we could kick the field goal just yet the pressure coming gotta get rid of it we do just in time my goodness thank thank goodness that there's no penalty on that 27 seconds now as we step back looking to throw. It'll be the four verts out. Right bumper maybe open. Chad Bradshaw comes down with it inside the 15 and there. We will take our first time out with 22 seconds on the clock. We'll see what it can be done as we'll look maybe for Marquise, maybe Tyson Mobley, or maybe we just throw a safe one to DJ Johnson, get a couple of yards, get inside the 10 and get ourselves a second and three. It is second down, but we're going to run the counter here. Defense looks like they want to bring pressure. I don't feel comfortable passing the ball. So we'll give it to CJ Beasley. And I don't see the blocking out to the edge. So tried to run up the middle. Nothing doing. 
get stopped and have to take another timeout. So what can we do with the third down? Bringing Marquise in motion. Going to look to scramble, of course. And there it is. A in the back of the end zone. Logan Malden wide open, as I expected. And, of course, he's going to hold on to that one as we extend the lead back up to 21 with just 11 seconds left in the half. Radon took a pretty big shot releasing that, so a good throw from him. There is no guarantee that we prevent Penn State from scoring here, so... Uh, let's just hope that we can stop them. They will lose a few seconds on the return, but with eight seconds in the timeout, there's a little bit of a threat. So we will send the safeties deep, kind of expecting them just to run the ball, and it will be a handoff, although kind of dangerous. No timeout taken for the Nittany Lions, but they come out in the hurry up, so maybe they're going to try to get another playoff, uh, or maybe they were just trying to see if we would be set uh, looking for an advantage. They don't snap the ball. And as we will head into the locker rooms, we're up 28 to 7. Uh, and we get the football. This one, not a great start for the Nittany Lions. Uh, but a great start for us. Offensively fantastic. The one mistake that we've really made throwing the interception was immediately rectified. Uh, we forced a fumble and recovered that. Otherwise, it's been all touchdowns in the defense. Short of that last drive has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I got no complaints. If we keep executing, we're going to be punching our ticket into the national championship game really soon. Just two quarters left to play in this Rose Bowl semifinal game. So as Marquise brings this one out of the end zone, I want to ask if you... Oh gosh, maybe that's not the time. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do that. Uh, helps the channel grow and... Uh, helps you stay up to date and when these videos are posted. Maybe that's a little bit of karma. Try to tell people to subscribe or like and bad things happen to you in game. I'm not sure. We'll look to pass on first down as they are bringing a lot, a lot of pressure. But Radon has all the space in the world. This feels like the first play for our offense in the first half. That one was 63 yards. This one 45. Because we've already gone above 350 yards of offense. Uh, and we are one play into the third quarter. How about a counter out of the eye? Blocking is okay. We'll just make sure that CJ gets upfield. We'll take another five yards on the ground. We're running with ease right now. I really want to be passing the ball a little bit more. I think we could be really efficient, but it's just so scary. Throwing that one on the run. Nobody that we can get the ball to. It falls incomplete. I'm a little bit worried about converting this third down, especially on this play. We're going with the midline read option, which can be a little bit weird, but we do hand it off. Brayden Bennett picks up a block, and Brayden Bennett gets inside the red zone. One more time for the team, a 22-yard pickup. This game just is not fair. An absolute blowout, I think, by playoff standards, and we're just going to keep running the ball. No reason not to. Braden Bennett kind of got cut up on the line, but still managed to find eight more yards. Well, if they can't stop the run, why should I go away from it? On second and two, CJ Beasley comes in and he goes up the middle. And he's got us the first and goal. And I think it's time to bring JJ Barr back in for some more fullback dives. He doesn't get to see the field a lot, but when he does, he knows he's going to get the touchdown sooner or later. Got a yard when he needed two there, so maybe he can get into the end zone on the next attempt. We might be one of the easiest teams to scout for when it comes to these goal line situations, but whether or not you can actually stop us is a whole nother question. JJ Barr into the end zone, and it's now a 28-point lead. Uh, this is just not going well. If the defense gets a stop here, I think we might start to burn the clock. Try to avoid any injuries going into the championship game. I hate to say it, but this could get to the point where we bring in our backups against Penn State. What kind of revenge game is this? Just absolutely decimating them. They try to run the screen. It works for a yard. Almost lost yards on it. At this point, what I'm hoping for is just another turnover. I want to see if we can uh, really humiliate them. They step back to pass. Guy open. Another broken tackle as Manny Stokes... And Cal Mackey can't do it, but we knock him out of bounds. That play brings up a third and four for us to counter, and we're going to bring the safety blitz. Make sure that if they run the ball, it's unsuccessful, and otherwise we just get pressure maybe on the quarterback. That was terrible for me. Uh, 
Uh, I got I got no comment there. This quarterback honestly has had a pretty solid day passing the ball so far, at least. Uh, man in motion. We're going to continue to bring some pressure. This time, Kale Mackey come in. We don't jump the snap, but it's going to be a screen. Quarterback's actually going to scramble. You don't see that often. And it was a pretty successful screen. Turned what would have been a loss of yards into a positive two. Seems to me like a little bit of a mistake, though, for these guys to just keep going with the screens. Uh, but that's the AI for you. There's a pass to the running back out of the backfield. Gets four yards, but it is third down once again. And I'm bringing that safety blitz again. We'll see what we can do. Never mind. That'll allow us just to back off into coverage. It's a false start from the offense, and it'll be third and nine. So we know that the pass is coming. What can we do to stop it? As the quarterback steps back. Looking to throw, has a man open over the middle and just the coverage doesn't get there in time. And they convert the third down. Kind of seems like they've figured our defense out. Thankfully for us, it's a little bit late as they have, you know, accrued a pretty big deficit. And I don't think they're going to be able to come back yet. They're moving quick. They're showing that sense of urgency here in the hurry up, but I'm just not sure it's going to be enough as there's another man open and that'll be a first and goal for them. Honestly, the defense getting a little bit embarrassed these past two drives. Just unable to get off the field as they're going to score the touchdown. What a block out there from the wide receiver to pancake our safety. Well, 35-14. Offense needs to respond real quick. All right, Marquise down in the end zone to return this one, fielding it at the goal line. They're playing with fire kicking to him. Doesn't burn them that time. But it just might if they keep scoring. All touchdowns today for the offense. With two minutes left here in the third quarter, we'll see if we can score one more. And that might be enough just to tell everybody to kind of take a breather. Right on again. I should be taking those hits, but I'm getting really greedy for yards. We'll look to the air on this one as we'll step back. And this is Marquise's first time going downfield on the left and... Good jump from John Sanchez. Gets the deflection. That's another one of those plays where I think if I wait another second, Marquise gets enough separation, but just impatient. And now we have a third down to deal with. Up the middle, another conversion. We are perfect. I think now six is six on our third downs in this game. It seems a little bit unfair what we're doing to these guys. Looking to throw once again. They're bringing pressure. So I'm going to get outside the pocket, but there's Marquise. Oh, I wish he would have been a little bit further downfield. He was completely wide open there. We'll go with a play action on this first down. Is maybe over the middle. We have DJ Johnson inside the red zone. Oh my goodness. The route running is impeccable right now. Looking really strong all around. Kind of feels to me like this is a team that could win the championship. Still uh, another quarter and a few minutes to play before we get there. But CJ Beasley breaks a tackle and he's on the doorstep. 307 rushing yards to this point for this offense. This is typically where we give the ball to JJ, but I'm going to try to reward CJ for the good run there. Given the easy little waltz in touchdown, we get our lead back up to four touchdowns. And just every time Penn State thinks that they have some sort of answer we just punch them right in the mouth one more time finally learning their lesson taking a touch back on that kickoff and we'll see if i live learned my lesson uh every time we've gone into the 335 things have not worked out for us so we'll try to avoid the nickel on this drive and when well, we come out stopping the screen and making them lose three yards we don't do this often i'm gonna use our Sydney mccray on this one see what we can do coming off the edge Second and 13, we get pressure on the quarterback, but he's got his running back wide open. And they almost get the first down once again. Definitely expecting them to run this one up the middle. It looks like it's going to be there. No, of course, it's a counter. It's always a counter, isn't it? Oh, man. Once again, we can't stop him on third down. This might just be the final play of the third quarter. As they'll step back looking to throw and they go out towards the edge. They find Theo Johnson. He gets out of bounds with three seconds left there. Surely this will be the final play and we can get into the fourth. No, we don't even have to deal with it. 
Second and three as we head into the fourth quarter, up 42 to 14, just absolutely dominating the Nittany Lions in a revenge game. Really wish we could have done this earlier in the season, but I guess that game served as maybe a little bit of bulletin board material. We came in fired up for this one. We were firing on all cylinders, and we've got this in the bag so long as the uh, special teams probably can just recover an onside kick. Don't really expect to run a whole lot of plays at this point. Now we're going to look to throw. And Sid McCray needs to get there in coverage to get the stop. And that'll do just enough. Every opportunity that we have to uh, keep the clock moving on this drive, I think, is a victory. They're going to step back to throw again. And once again, we get a good tackle and the clock will keep moving. Kind of interesting to me that on that one, they don't call him out of bounds i can't complain too much though is on third down they're gonna look to pass over the middle they had somebody and they had brandon lewis had his man i don't i don't know who the receiver is but he couldn't keep it in bounds so the pass goes incomplete it brings up a fourth and four and they're gonna go for it here can't say that i blame them at this point here is what it is it looks like they're gonna try to throw and they threw short manny stokes can't get the tackle in time just didn't have the speed to close out. Unfortunately, it's going to be another conversion for Penn State. They're trying to stay alive as much as they can. I'm not sure how good it's going to really end up doing them. Uh, but anything they can do to try and stay in this game, I guess they're going to go for. Having trouble getting to this quarterback right now. Sort of rush an extra guy, bringing five on the play. They throw it out in the flat. <laughs> Look at that we. Have another tackle broken, but at least we only gave up a yard there. It's another third down, and I'm getting super aggressive. We're bringing the safeties on this one, trying to get to him. It's an option out towards the edge. He can't get the pitch out in time, and they'll lose four yards. It's going to bring up a uh, fourth and eight for the defense to try to defend against. And I feel pretty confident that we can get this done. We're going to use the defensive end on this fourth down. Try to get pressure on the quarterback. We do that. Kale Mackey slows him up enough. It's a turnover on downs. And that's going to be it for this game. We can just start to run the clock down. And it might just take, what, one, maybe two first downs for us to punch our ticket into that national championship game. I haven't paid attention to the scores at the bottom. And actually, now that I say that, I think the scores at the bottom are a little bit flawed. Uh, so we won't know who we're facing until this one is complete. Uh, just need to pick up a first down here and there. And CJ Beasley weaving his way around. Finds 11 more yards for us. Completely dismantled this team as we are, oh my gosh, almost off to the races. CJ Beasley, another 11 yards and another first down. We're going to get to the two minute mark. On this handoff as we will give it to CJ again. This time up the middle, bouncing it towards the edge. Outrunning, guys. Picking up more yards. And now CJ Beasley, I think, has over 100. Yeah, 110 on 17 carries. I know Radon is well over that mark. It's just uh, Braden Bennett that hasn't made it there yet. But Radon's going to keep this one. And, oh, I wanted to slide down. Took an unnecessary hit. A little bit slow to get up there, maybe. And now with a minute to go in the fourth quarter, Penn State not electing to take their timeouts. Signals to me that they are just going to wave the white flag. They actually had a good stop there. Dropped CJ for a loss of two, but that's going to be all she wrote. I'm curious to see if they take the timeout here. I am going to try to take the knee. Uh, we'll bring up a fourth down, so they could technically get the ball back. We'll see how principled they are and now uh, they're just gonna let the clock run out kudos to penn state showing a little bit of class there but it's gonna be your teal boys finally finally making it into the national championship game in the college football playoff against a big 12 team we'll see who it is but man what an absolute monster game for both sides of the ball uh I guess these guys were ready to play. And look at that. We have an Orange Bowl win. Now we have a Rose Bowl win on this season. Sitting at, I think, what, 15-1? and one? No, 14-1. and one. It must be uh, one more game to play. I think we're ready for it. Well, how about that? 42-14. to 14. Look at the stats. 345 rushing yards. Put up another 186 through the air. 
Um, we threw a pick, but immediately got the fumble back. So good on the turnover battle. Won the time of possession. We allowed them to run for more than I expected. Um, they did a decent job passing, but just absolutely beautiful. Right on. Obviously, offensive player of the game. Nine for 16 for 186 yards passing and two touchdowns and 10 carries for 172 yards. Uh, Logan Malden with the receiving touchdown is apparently our defensive player of the game. Uh, yeah, I don't understand that one bit. Uh, maybe he was the one that forced the fumble. <laughs> That's a little bit weird that there wasn't somebody else that they could have highlighted. So our second trophy, I guess technically our, yeah, our third trophy won this season. Uh, and now we can head to the, uh, scores and schedules and we can see who's winning the Red River Shootout Part 2. As we will go and find our Texas and Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl, 12-1 versus 11-2. The two and the three seeds. Who is it that's going to win it? I think I saw the answer. Is it true? It is the Longhorns. 13 and one. Texas is back as they win it 45 to 28. Uh, honestly, a pretty impressive victory for them. And the Longhorns in this one uh, gained their lead there at the end of the second quarter and then just never looked back. Able to outscore them in three of the four quarters and they pull away with the win so now we can uh do our third stage where we set up the national championship and once again as this file loads in we can uh see that it's worked again oh every time it works i'm just so happy <laughs> and there it is coastal carolina versus the university of texas in the college football playoff national championship game in Atlanta, Georgia. Honestly, uh, maybe a little bit closer to us, but a decent neutral site there at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We'll go ahead and save that up. And as we load back into the dynasty, we can see once again it is set up properly. I assume we can't see the matchup information. No, we can. It works this time. And we are not favored to win this uh, game. 14 and 1 number 1 seed versus the 13 and 1 number 3 seed and Lee Corso says that the Longhorns are going to win it. We come in statistically a little bit worse than them. Um I'm not a huge fan of that. They have a very strong looking offense, number 1 total offense in the country. They average 500 yards per game. That is incredible. Uh, we come in with one of the best defenses in the country, but they are just looking really solid. What did Texas do this past season? Uh, a lot of wins. A lot of wins. They lost to West Virginia, lost to Auburn, but that's kind of broken. They didn't really lose to Auburn. Uh, the schedule stuff, again, doesn't fully reflect until the end, but their regular season looks good. And they actually beat Oklahoma twice, uh, so they were two of the Sooners' three losses this past year. Very, very excited to get this one underway. And again, if you guys get this video to somewhere around 100 likes within the first 24 hours, we'll upload back to back. And you guys can see the, uh, the national championship tomorrow. Unfortunately, though, that's going to have to do it for this episode. Again, if you enjoy the videos, please feel free to subscribe so that you can be notified when these videos get posted. And while you're down there hitting like and hitting subscribe, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, there's going to be a link to the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.